All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon are down below if you want to support me. You only do so if you actually can. So I previously, in a video last year, talked about Qatar's ongoing construction of expanded natural gas production and thus following LNG export capacity. Well, it turns out they decided not to stop there. The first expansion is going to be ready soon, most likely next year, if not, then 2025. And the second one that we're talking about now will be completed likely in 2026 or 2027. So to start off with the basics, Qatar shares with Iran the massive Pars gas field in the middle of the Persian Gulf, most of the field being in Qatar's designated maritime territory, with a little bit being in Iran's territory. However, even though you'll see a divided table somewhere of how much reserves, how much gas lies in each nation's section, that's kind of irrelevant because it's one gas field, it's one reservoir. The gas will continuously flow throughout the porous rock layers. It's not like there's some national boundary force field in the middle of the gas reservoir that's going to stop gas flowing from one side to another. And the Paris gas field is truly massive. Had at its discovery 1.26 quadrillion cubic feet of natural gas, of recoverable, extractable natural gas, that is. Now, obviously, production has been ongoing from it in differing amounts over the course of time. So the Pars natural gas field, in terms of gas remaining, is still exceptionally large, as it still has over 1 quadrillion feet, roughly right now being at about most likely 1.12 like many of the oil reservoirs in many nations of the Persian Gulf, the limitation actually comes from just the amount of the amount of extraction infrastructure that you're willing to develop and can put in place. Thusly, your limit is coming from a plateau. Cutter's case at present is maintaining a plateau of about 17 billion cubic feet per day of natural gas production, while Iran only produces about 5 billion cubic feet per day from the field, having intended off and on to add additional production, but to never really being able to see it through. But combined, obviously, that 17 plus 5 means a total production from the field between the two countries of about 22 billion cubic feet per day, with most estimates averaging around a maximum possible, based on just how much uh, infrastructure you could put in place across the field, a likely maximum or ceiling threshold production level would probably be somewhere around 60 billion cubic feet per day. Now, it's not likely to ever actually approach that number. However, it is going to be climbing a bit higher as Cutter intends to take it. Cutter, as I said, currently producing 17 billion cubic feet per day from the field. And internally, for their own power production, Cutter consumes about 4 billion cubic feet. So they're exporting about 13 billion cubic feet per day. So Qatar was already constructing an expansion to their production from the field and their LNG export capacity to follow it that when completed either next year or in 2025 will bump their production up to a new plateau of 23 billion cubic feet per day and thus raising their exports from 13 up to 19 billion cubic feet per day. However, they are also now constructing another set of field expansions and LNG export capacity expansions as well that when completed in 2026 or 2027 will take them even further from 23 up to 27 billion cubic feet per day of natural gas production and thus bringing their exports from 19 up to 23 billion cubic feet per day of LNG heading out worldwide. Now the follow-up question to this obviously how long could they maintain said plateau and also, and also you have to factor in Iran's effect as well. You will usually hit the end of your ability to maintain a particular production plateau around the halfway point of field depletion. So for that, you have to do a little bit of math, except you don't actually have to do the math because I did it. First, you start at 1.12 quadrillion cubic feet and going from assuming that the new production, the first batch of it comes online next year in 2024, that's three years between 2024 and 2027, and 23 billion cubic feet per day of production comes out to roughly rounded 8 trillion cubic feet produced per year. So that's 24 trillion cubic feet taken off the total, 
brings you down to 1.096. Then we'll assume the later year, 2027, for when the second edition set comes on, bringing them up to 27 billion cubic feet per day, which comes out to roughly 9.5 trillion cubic feet per year, 95 trillion cubic feet per decade. So from 2027 up to 2037, you drop by 95 trillion cubic feet down to 1.001. .001. In terms of quadrillion cubic feet, that is, go up to 2047, you drop down to 906 trillion cubic feet. 2057, you drop down to 811. 2067, you drop down, you drop down to 716. And then you stop there because you have to factor in Iran's contribution, about 1.8 trillion cubic feet per year or so. And so assuming that remains relatively constant at a plateau, if you take their numbers up to 2067, that's about 72 trillion cubic feet that you have to take off from the 716 that we get down to, which takes you to around 644, which is roughly enough around the halfway point of depletion for the initially 1.26 quadrillion cubic feet of natural gas in the Pars gas field. They could maintain those plateau production levels until roughly between 2065 and 2070. Of course, again, that's assuming that Qatar doesn't expand their production any higher beyond 27 billion cubic feet per day after they get up to that point. And also that Iran doesn't go through with some of these small expansions that they wanted to, or that they don't have massive production blackouts from internal unrest like they've had in the past. And that's it for now, so thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are there if you want to support me, you only do so if you actually can. Also go subscribe to my Catch channel so we can eventually get her up to 1,000 subs and hopefully get her channel monetized someday. But no matter what happens to me anyways, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.